Gemma, I'm the Community Engagement Ranger for the North Access team. And this is Luna, you guys have met us before. We do hidden walks around Hampshire and today we're in Berkeley. So Berkeley is about four miles south of Newbury, so we're really close to the Hampshire-Berkshire border. And today we're going to have a little look at a route which goes into Etchinswell Parish and then loops back round to Berkeley Parish. Uh, today I've also got Marion joining me from the Etchenswell Parish Council because they actually promoted this route and got some styles changed to gates as part of their parish project so I want to talk about that with her as well. We can park at the Portal Memorial Hall. If the Memorial Hall has got an activity going on and it's quite obvious it's getting busy you can actually park on the roadside which we'll be walking down in a minute or a recreation ground just around the corner so there's lots of options for parking. So let's start and go and explore. So we've crossed the road and we're going to head down the road from the village hall. Okay, so we've just had a little short walk down that street. We go past the school, hence why it's so busy at the moment. Um, what we're going to do now, we're going to we come to a crossroads. We're going to go towards the clear school. So we're going to go up there. So as I said, a crossroads, we cross the road going towards the clear school, which is signposted. And also when we come back, we do have a loop round and you'll see behind us where we end up actually coming out. So that is where we come out at the end of the walk. Okay, so we've just walked down that road. We've walked past the clear school, which was on our left-hand turn. We keep on going past, uh, past this clear school. You'll get to a finger post. The finger post turns left or right, and we are going to make the right-hand turning. So currently we're still on a tarmac path, so you can't get that bit wrong. It's a tarmac path we're turning off on the right-hand side. Come on in. I'm going to use this point to stop and introduce you to Marion. So Marion is part of Etchenswell Parish Council and she's actually my tour guide today because I don't know this area very well at all. Morning. Good morning, Thanks Gemma. Thanks for taking me here. Well, what a gorgeous day we have. I know, and we've stopped in a really pretty place actually. Um, so literally we've just stopped off of that path that I was talking about previously. Why are we here today? Why, why is this route important to Berkeley and Etchenswell Parish Councils? This is a route that Etchenswell Parish Council have been working on getting stiles replaced by gates so it's much more accessible to people who find walking a little more difficult but still enjoy it. Perfect, well I can't wait to have a look at them so let's continue down the tarmac path and we're going to stop and talk about things as we see them. Okay so at the end of that bit of tarmac path you come to a driveway and some people may worry because it looks like you're about to enter somebody's house. So if you are in any doubt whenever this happens, check your OS map. The important thing is to remain mindful you are walking down someone's drive. So if you've got dogs, you must have them on a lead. If you've got your kids with you, make sure they're not running riot. Make sure they are keeping to the footpath. Perfect. So guys, you're going to see this in a moment. There is a way marker there. So that's your clear indication you are on the right way. So we're going to go through the gap and walk along the field. I just want to make you aware of these wonderful wildflower boundaries. Um, so when you're walking along this farm track, and actually I've seen many more around while I've been walking, take the time to appreciate them. So many insects and little small mammals rely on these wildflower boundaries. So don't just walk past them, take a moment to have a look, see what you can find. Um, again, we are on farmer's land, so it's highly recommended you keep your dog under effective control. You'll notice I've got Luna on a lead. Um, what we don't want is them dashing around through the wildflowers, disturbing all the wildlife around us. So do be mindful of that as well. Okay so we've just come from the the wildflower border walk we'll call it that for ease and then we come to a crossroads. Now this is really important guys because there's not a lot of signage here at the moment. On this occasion we're going to go straight ahead. Left and right are private entries okay so we don't go up there. So we're going to go straight ahead and up through the field. So what is your vision for Edgenswell in the next few years? What, what are the projects you have in mind? Our vision is to be completely style free. Mm -hmm. Residents tell us which ones are causing them the most problems. Right. Um, there are some walks that are very energetic anyway. Yep. So having a style as part of it is not a big deterrent. But the other aspect of removing styles is the fact that it makes it an awful lot easier for people to take their dogs for a walk. 
Okay, so we've uh, just come out from that field and now we get to a very small country road, very, very minor road, but we're still at a road. So please be road aware. You're gonna find farm traffic down here, most likely cyclists as well. We have got a finger post here amongst all of the undergrowth, just stating where we've just come from. And we're gonna turn left and there's a set of steps just up to the right-hand side of the bank. So we're gonna make our way to the steps now. Come on then, let's go. Okay, so we've reached one of the gates that Marion and the Parish Council um, got some funding for to change from a stile to a gate. So do you want to speak to, speak to us about the gate yeah. we've got here? Well, the gate is on the Simington Court Estate and they decided to be in keeping with the area. They would put in a wooden gate, which is self-closing and looks rather nicer than the metal it ones. Smart. It yeah. does. Now, these fields that we're going to walk through next are always used for stock. In order to keep people safe, the estate has made walkways which separate the walkers from the um, animals, so it's a lot easier to get through and you don't need to be too worried. Okay, so we've just come through uh, the little walkway that we were talking about earlier. At this point, you do come into the field itself, but literally the, the gate is just to the left of me here. Um, the cows aren't here at the moment, not that I can see, but it's really worth quickly talking to you about dogs and cows. If you're gonna walk through a, a cow field or any livestock for that matter with your dog, they have to be on a lead. They have to be in control. You have to be in control of your dog. Make sure your dog stays quiet. If you have to give them treats as they walk past the cows to keep them quiet, do so. Be swift, don't run, but don't, don't dawdle. Just get yourself through that field um, and into the gate. So we're on to our next part of the walkway. Okay, so at the end of that walkway, we've got a lovely gap again. And you'll notice we have got some way marker discs on each side. So again, just checking in with yourself, knowing you're on the right track. This time we're going to walk across the arable field. So when we're talking about walking across arable fields, fields of crops in, really, really important as always to stick to the right of way, because if you deviate from the right of way in a crop field, you are damaging the crops and we don't want to do that. Again, very highly recommended your dog is on a lead to ensure they also keep to the right of way because the right of way is for them too. Come on then. At the end of the field, we come to a small piece of woodland with a ditch crossing which was put in by volunteers in the area. Prior to that there was just one plank and it got as slippy as anything and lots of people fell in the ditch. Okay so we've just walked all up those fields in our little enclosed area. Um, Apparently there used to be a stile here, but now it's a gap, which is really, really good. So what you now come to is a track um, to the left. That's somebody's house, so we definitely don't go left. We're going to go right. There's a country road right at the bottom. Again, just be a bit road away. You're coming onto a road and then we're going to turn right at the end of the road. When Luna's finished enjoying herself, of course. Come on in. Let's go. <laughs> Okay, so we've just come out onto the road. I think this is a really important uh, thing to note. When you're walking down roads with no path, it's best that you face the oncoming traffic. It states it in the countryside code as well. Purely for the fact people will be able to see you much quicker and more clearly, especially because I've got a dog with me as well. It's really, really important you are visible. So I'm going to carry on walking this side and I'm going to face oncoming traffic. That's the key thing to do when you're walking on roads with no paths. We've left the road and as you saw, we walked, we crossed the road, didn't we? There's a little green walk just to the pond area, quite an obvious bench. And this is our halfway point. And it's quite a nice halfway point, isn't it? For if you brought a flask of tea out with you or your snacks or whatnot, but this is, it's nice, it's shaded. So it's really important to note actually today, we've left a bit earlier because it's gonna be a warm day later. We've got the dog with us, but it's really important when you're organizing a walk in the summer months to think about your shade opportunities. And this is the perfect point, isn't it? Nice halfway point to enjoy. Okay, so we're just leaving the pond now. Literally, we've just done a little detour. We've, we've come from that direction. We walked around the pond and then we're coming back out onto the main road again. After our little pond detour, we're turning left. We're carrying on up the road. Okay, so we just walked down the road and you'll be able to see there's a finger post in front of us, stating left or right, and we're gonna go right. Come on then, let's go. So we're coming through the farm. 
Is that right? And to the track? To the track and turning right. Okay, just to be mindful, we are obviously walking through a working farm. So when you're walking through, be mindful of farm traffic. Be mindful of landowners possibly moving their cattle or sheep around. Have your dog under effective control. I definitely don't want Luna running around here causing chaos. We must be mindful and respectful when we're walking through property like this that we are behaving correctly. Okay, so we've walked through the farm. The track doesn't change. This is the track you stay on. You don't veer off it, okay? So it's nice and straightforward, actually. And as you can see, it weaves around the edge of the woodland and then we're just literally following the track along. But Marion, you were saying it's got a local name. Well, it's a very well-used track, as you can see. And because it's the widest, most easily accessible track, everybody knows it as the motorway. So this is so Etchinswell Motorway. This is Etchinswell Motorway. Much nicer than the M25, I think. So, I OK, think we're so. on Etchinswell Motorway. And as you see, we've just had a run on what run past us, so it's very well used. And you can see why, actually. There's so much space. You've got shade. You've got lovely views. And you've actually got quite a decent surface. Yes. Yeah. So good for push chairs. Very good for children, for walking your dog, for running. OK, let's continue. OK, so at this point, I just wanted to make you aware you come across a way marker. Again, just making sure you know you're on the right route. We're following the Brenda Parker Ways, the purple arrow, and we are continuing going on down, OK? But yeah, this is just so you know you're definitely on the right track. Come down. OK, so um, we've carried on walking down from our last way marker, and we get to another one. So there's a lot going on here, but importantly for us, we are now not following the Brenda Park Way anymore. We are turning left, so we're following the um, field margin alongside the woods. So just so you know, when you get to the second way marker, you are now leaving the Brenda Park Way. Okay, so as you're coming along the field edge, look out for it, because it's getting a little bit overgrown now, what with all of the weather we've had recently. But there is a right hand turning off, and I'll show you quickly, there is a way marker and a small f uh, finger post here. Um, but again, have your OS map to, uh, to hand, know where you're going. Don't come out and just think you'll remember the route. Always have something to hand, okay? Because there's moments like this, you might just need clarification. But you've got your way marker here and we're turning off of the field. So we've walked along the, uh, the woodland and we're about to turn right. Uh, again, there's a way marker post there. Another one of the handrails at the parish. Another one of the handrails on an old sleeper bridge. So we're going to come out onto a field, and then where do we go from the field? The way marker at the far end will show us that we turn left and follow the field edge round until we come back out to the very minor road that we crossed. Okay, so we've just come out the gap in the hedge from the road. Again, we get to a very minor road, so it's just being aware of oncoming traffic most likely again farm traffic and cyclists and we're going to go left so you'll see it says the Sidmonton herd there's a big old uh, dairy dairy farm sign there um, and there's a finger post and a way marker just to my left as we walk up the farm track you reach a gate this isn't always open but there is a gap through so you don't have to climb over it um, and Rather than going straight into the farm uh, yard, you go through another gate, which is waymarked past the horse boxes, a little detour round so you don't go through the main yard. We've come through past the horse box unit and you see the waymarker here telling us to head on down this track going to into the fields. Okay, so we've just walked down that short track from where the uh, horse stables were, and we come to two choices. So we've got one choice, which is the permissive footpath that the landowners put in. They've even put a sign here explaining why they've done it in case you've got concerns about walking through a field with cattle in. Or you can use the actual public right of way, which is going over the gate and going straight across the field where you can see the next field gate. Um, we're going to do that choice today because the cattle don't seem to be in the field, so I'm quite happy to walk across there with Luna. If the cattle were in the field though, I think I'd be choosing the permissive route. With a dog attached to me, I think that's the, the safest way about it. But as I said, no cows in the field today, we're going to walk through. Okay, we've just walked across the field. You'll see where the permissive path I pointed out to you would come out of. 
Um, we are going to walk through the gate. What we're going to do is walk straight across the field again and you'll see there is a way marker pointing out that way. The permissive footpath continues when we walk through the gate. Marion will show you exactly where that starts. Excellent. So there is the other choice of a permissive footpath if the cows are in the field for you. Now we've come across to the end of the field. You can see there's a stile here. You can avoid the stile by going into the beginning of the permissive path and just coming round the finger post and you've avoided the stile. Okay, so we've just made our way uh, from that permissive footpath which I went around uh, the gates and we come to a bit of a junction. Uh, you'll notice there is a way marker here and that is telling you you need to turn right and really hug the fence and tree line, okay, when you're going around this field. As you can see, it's been recently ploughed so, you know, you're thinking they've planted things in there. There's going to be growth there very soon, I'm sure. So we do need to be mindful. So we're going to hug the tree line. We do not go straight ahead. That is not a right of way. So we're going to follow the way marking and we're going to hug the tree line around the field. Come on in. Okay, so we've come to the end of us skirting along the, the field edge and there is a way marker. You can just about see it in the stingers, but we are going to be heading through the woodland here. So let's go. We have entered the grounds of Earlston Manor now, and there is just one footpath going through this part of their garden. So you need to be careful that you stick to it. It's very well waymarked and takes us past an ornamental pond with a bridge and up onto a track that will turn right and go out of the estate. Right, we've come through the small woodland and we come to a finger post and we're going to turn right on the bridleway. Okay, so we're coming out of the grounds now, as you can see from this beautiful um, iron gate here, which is quite beautiful and stunning to look at. Um, we come to a bridle gate, so these gates are slightly different because we're on a bridle way. Imagine you're on a horse, you're not going to be able to bend down and latch something. So a bridle gate, they've got this big old hand on the top, so again, you're on a horse, you don't have to bend down very far to open it, which is perfect. Come then, through we go. I'll leave that open for Marion. Um, and we are following the track which goes round to the left, okay? So again, we've got the finger post there marking our way. Okay, so worth pointing out, this track just goes all the way back to Berkeley. So we're about 1K away from Berkeley. But there are some visual signs for you just to make sure you're on the right track. So again, we've come to a gate here, um, quite an obvious gap where to go through the side of the gate. But this is just one long walkway back. Okay, so we are literally back to where we started. So as you can see, we're at the crossroads, the clear school, it's just down to the right hand side of us. So we've come out of the track and we're about to cross the road now. We've got a tractor coming behind us, so we better be quick. <laughs> okay, let's cross. Right, so we've come to the end of our walk. Um, we're back to where we started, back to where we parked the cars. As you can see, it's a little bit less busy now because everyone's at school. So as, as I said before, plenty of place to park. When school kids aren't here, you've got lots of choice on the road. Um, so, thank you so much for showing us that, that route, it was really nice. We couldn't really have nice. had a better day, really. Perfect day. Absolutely beautiful. Just getting hot now, so we've finished it at the right time, haven't we? Yeah. Now, the most important question, refreshment stops. Where would you recommend people go? Well, you're not very far from two very good local pubs. Perfect. There's one in um, Berkeley, which is called the Carpenter's Arms, which has a car park but you could walk from here in about 10 or 15 minutes. Okay. Check out its website. And there's one in Etchingswell that, if you've come from that direction, you'll probably drive past on your way home. And again, check its website, it's called Royal Oak. Royal Oak, okay. And both of them do lunchtime food, evening food, depends on the day of the week. Of course, but that's the most important thing, isn't it? Where can you have your well-deserved drink and pub grub afterwards. 
Indeed. <laughs> Thank you so much for showing us. Thank you so much for showing us your um, Styles to Gates project. And I hope that's inspired you. And maybe if you're a parish councillor watching this or a landowner, or you're part of a community group like the Ramblers or a walking group, anyone can try and access this funding. It's called the Parish Partnership Programme, okay? Um, and anyone can access, access that funding for any rights of way improvement. As you can see from what Marion and Edgensville Parish Council did, they've, they've made a real difference to that route. Thank you very much for watching. If you really, really enjoyed this and you want to see more, please sign up and follow us on YouTube. We've got loads more videos on there and hopefully you'll join us again soon. Thanks.